71 years before Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on a local bus, the young Ida B. Wells was fighting for what she knew was right. At this point in her life, she was still working in rural schools, so she was a commuter. She had bought a ticket in the ladies' car, and she had ridden in it before, but for some reason, on that day, the conductor got fed up with her and tried to physically force her off the train. She was not going to give up that easily, so she fought back. I refused, saying that the forward car was a smoker, and as I was in the ladies' car, I proposed to stay. The conductor tried to drag me out of the seat, but the moment he caught hold of my arm, I fastened my teeth in the back of his hand. I had braced my feet against the seat in front of me and was holding to the back. As he had already been badly bitten, he didn't try it again by himself. He went forward and got the baggage man and another man to help him, and of course they succeeded in dragging me out. She got a ride home in a wagon and immediately sued the railroad. Her case wove through the courts over the years, and she won in the lower courts. They said that she was, in fact, a lady. But when she got to the Tennessee Supreme Court, her case lost. At the time, Tennessee was in the process of implementing extreme segregation laws, so there was no way she could have won her case. She was devastated, but this fueled her activism for the rest of her life. Um, so she uh, is born in the Deep South. Um, in the Deep, Deep South, uh, is orphaned at an early age, just after slavery, uh, and finds herself and her family um, dissolved. She um, is not pleased about this. She takes up a position as a school teacher. She ends up moving some of her siblings to Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, and then uh, soon thereafter takes up a career as a journalist, still in the Deep South. Ida moved into her aunt's house in Memphis in 1883 with her siblings she had managed to keep together. She worked for higher wages in a nearby suburb, Woodstock. During her vacation, she went to college. Shortly after her train incident, she stopped teaching and went into full-time investigative journalism. She had very strong political views, especially on women's rights. Wells' friend Thomas Moss ran a store called The People's Grocery on the outskirts of Memphis. His grocery store was doing well. One day, while Wells was away, a white mob invaded the store and a fight broke out. Three white men were killed, and Moss and two other men were jailed with pending trial. Later, a large white lynch mob stormed the jail and brought them out into the street, and killed them. When Ida got home and heard about this incident, she immediately wrote editorials in both of her papers. When the Civil War was finally over, to try to eliminate the inequality of the past 200 years, the government sent troops into the South to make sure the whites were treating people equally. This period of time was called the Reconstruction, but it unfortunately abruptly ended in 1876 and all the troops were called out of the South. Because they were not allowed to revert back to slavery, the whites made it as difficult as possible for black people to live a normal life. They installed special laws called Black Codes. The Jim Crow Laws, or Black Codes, a compilation of state and local legislators that promoted racism and segregation, governed the lives of many Southerners. These laws permitted the lynching of black citizens. Many people claimed that these laws were just, and that any reason to enact them was reason enough. The Jim Crow laws also played an enormous role in protecting members of the Ku Klux Klan and other white supremacist organizations from legal pushback. These laws were local in all senses, and varied from state to state, and even sometimes city to city. Wells started her full-time career as a journalist in 1899. She ran two newspapers, Memphis Free Speech and Headlight, and later Free Speech, these were both mainly concerning black rights or women's rights. An excerpt from one of her papers. The masses of the women of our race have not awakened to a true sense of the responsibilities that devolve on them. Of the influence they exert, they have not yet realized the necessity for erecting a standard of earnest, thoughtful, pure, noble womanhood rather than one of fashion, idleness, and uselessness. A standard bearing these lines, a perfect woman nobly planned to warm, comfort, and command, with something of an angel's light, 
and yet a spirit still and bright. Ida B. Wells worked in a printing shop in Memphis, where she printed her newspaper, The Memphis Free Speech and Headlight. One day, when Wells was in New York for some journalism work, a mob raided her printing shop and set her presses on fire. When she got back, she found a note on her burnt press that threatened to kill her if she ever came back to Memphis. She read it and left, taking the advice. The, the printing press is a centrally important part of the story, right? So she is um, a writer and an investigative journalist. Those things alone are not occupations uh, that feature women at all in the 19th century. She is also printing her own uh, newspaper or broadsheet, doing the work herself. This too is a radical and original act. There aren't very many black newspapers or black-run newspapers at the day and time, certainly none that took up the kind of uh, progressive political stance that she's taken up. So the press that she owns and runs becomes a kind of symbol of her independence and her spirit uh, as a, a political radical. So when it gets destroyed, it's not just about stopping her from saying these things, it's also about stopping her from um, finding her voice, it's about diminishing the, um, the symbolic power of her as an outspoken advocate of equality and feminism, uh, and it's a real blow um, and a, a reminder that a, the press can always be a fairly radical thing in and of itself. She moved north to Chicago where she lived for the rest of her life. From Chicago, she was able to travel to places like northeastern United States and London to raise awareness about lynching and other injustices that African American people and women in general face in the South. Ida worked especially enthusiastically on the topic of lynching. Although lynching continued for another 30 years after her death, she had a direct impact through writing and outreach to officially end it in 1968. Throughout Wells's career, a collection of postcards was produced featuring black men being lynched. These disturbing postcards were circulated through the mail and can be found in the photo collection called Without the Sanctuary. Besides writing in her newspaper, Wells wrote quite a few books, and most, if not all of them, on the subject of lynching. Her published works include, but are not limited to, Southern Horrors and Other Writings, The Anti-Lynching Campaign of Ida B. Wells, Crusade for Justice, The Autobiography of Ida B. Wells, The Red Record, and On Lynching. Ida B. Wells, a name not many have heard, but a name that the ones who have look up to. Among the first freed slaves to go to college, she exceeded all expectations, especially being a woman of her time. Although she was expelled for rebellious behavior, she continued her education and, as you can see, produced many works which are still valued today. She was also a suffragette, so she worked hard for the white woman's right to vote, even though it wasn't hers. This shows her dedication to what she believed in. Ida B. Wells fought with all her might for the issues she believed in most, and she fought well. She made a great deal of progress in both African American and women's rights, yet these problems still exist today. She was fighting against black codes and we're fighting against police brutality. She was fighting for a woman's right to vote, and we are fighting for equal pay for equal work. Wells devoted her life to bettering the lives of over half of the population of the world. And look at today. Although our society is not perfect, women can vote, get a job in STEM, and were able to make this project. And there was a black president in the White House for eight years. As one of the founders of the NAACP, Ida B. Wells is definitely a person to be remembered. It is crucial that Wells be brought back into the mainstream conscience as the courageous civil rights leader that she was.